So it's been almost exactly two years since the FDA released their final guidelines, which would make hearing aids available over the counter. And that move brought a bunch of brands into the category that had never been in the hearing aid space before. The first one to enter was Bose, followed by Sony, which is one of our favorites, Sennheiser and Jabra. So these are all consumer audio brands that now had a line of hearing aids. But there was one major consumer audio brand, and I mean major, that had yet to join the OTC hearing aid space until now, and that is Apple. Today we're gonna to talk about the big news. Apple AirPods Pro 2 have effectively turned into an entry-level pair of OTC hearing aids. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to set it all up, some of the things you need to know, my own experience after a day of wearing these devices, getting a sense for how they handle amplification and background noise, and how they compare to the rest of the market. If we haven't met yet, my name is Blake Cadwell. I'm the co-founder at Soundly.com. And on this channel and at Soundly.com, we spend all of our time reviewing the latest hearing technology. If you like what you see during this video, if you could give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, we would greatly appreciate it. Stick around to the very end of this video, and we're actually going to put these AirPods Pro 2 with hearing aid mode turned on into our test mannequin. You'll get a sample of what this actually sounds like in the real world and with some background noise. Let's get into it. Okay, before we talk about setting up your AirPods Pro 2 as an OTC hearing aid, let me give you just a little bit of background on how the hearing aid landscape has evolved over the last couple of years. As I just mentioned, the FDA moved to make over-the-counter hearing aids available in late 2022. That was a big deal for the category. Formerly, you had to go into a doctor's office, get your hearing tested, and have your hearing aids prescribed and fitted and programmed by a local audiologist. The new over-the-counter category made all of that possible from home using a smartphone app typically that programs your hearing aids and kind of takes the role of what an audiologist historically has done in clinic. We recently published a full video talking about the differences between OTC and prescription care. We'll link that somewhere up here if you're not yet familiar with what might make you a good candidate for OTC versus prescription care. The most important thing to know is that OTC is only good for those who have mild to moderate hearing loss. If you have severe hearing loss, or profound hearing loss, you'll probably need to go in and see a local doctor. Now, if you've never taken a hearing test, we're gonna walk through how to do that using your AirPods Pro 2, or if you don't yet have AirPods Pro 2, you can head over to soundly.com. We have a simple screener on the website, which will give you a sense for your particular hearing loss with any headphones that you have at home. Okay, on to the big release. Let's talk about how to turn your AirPods Pro 2 into a pair of over-the-counter hearing aids. We're gonna start with your operating system. If you are watching this in October or November of 2024, you may need to update your operating system to 18.1 or later. You're also gonna to need to have a pair of AirPods Pro. The other versions of AirPods from Apple will not work with these features. It needs to be a Pro version. We'll link the Pro version in the comments below if you are still looking for which AirPods to get in order to try these features. One of the things that's so exciting about this launch is that millions of Americans actually won't have to purchase anything. You can simply update the operating system on your phone and use your existing AirPods Pro, connect them together, and these features should be unlocked automatically through the software update that's been pushed. So let's dig into how you do that exactly. Okay, so once you have your AirPods connected and in your ears, you'll want to head over to the settings app on your iPhone. Here you should see AirPods right up at the top. You can tap on that and you're going to see a new section that didn't used to exist. It's called hearing health. It's right here in the middle of this screen. It's here that you can take a hearing test, which I'll do now. During this calibration phase, Apple is testing the outside world sound and the seal inside of your ears to make sure both are appropriate for the test. Let's begin. All right, once you've tested both your right and your left ear, Apple is going to give you the opportunity to turn on the hearing aid. You can access this at any time under the hearing health section by tapping hearing assistance. You can toggle this on and off. You'll also get access to a section called adjustments. Under adjustments, you can do a few different things. First, you can turn up the volume, which as I'm doing this just literally makes the world louder. You can change the right and left balance, which will shift from your right to your left ear. 
In general, you want to probably trust your hearing test results and uh, keep the balance that Apple has set for you based on your test. You can also shift from brighter to darker notes, which basically means turning up the treble or turning up the bass. Now, in general, when you go brighter, you're going to get more clarity and more crispness. A lot of folks might find that they get better speech understanding when they go brighter, and it's a little bit more comfortable when you go darker because you're getting more bass. One feature I really enjoyed is changing the ambient noise. So that means if you go all the way down to the bottom, you're hearing everything around you. You're hearing all the surround sound, papers rustling, leaves, wind, all of that. If you turn it all the way to the top, it's almost dampening those sounds entirely. So you're just going to be hearing voices, not really much else. A lot of folks really like the notion of this. In general, I found that the center was actually the most effective for me in understanding speech and having general spatial awareness. Conversation Boost puts your microphones in a front focus, which means you'll hear better in front of you than you do beside you and behind you. I've actually left this off in most cases as I find it's a little bit more natural as I'm going about my day. Finally, you can decide if your hearing test adjustments should be applied to media. So if you turn this on, it will adjust your music and video and also your calls and FaceTime. In most cases, I would recommend you do this. It'll help your podcasts or your phone calls feel clearer and more customized to your individual hearing. Now, at any time, you can go back in and take another hearing test or update your hearing test. You can look at all of the hearing tests that you've taken in the past as a list, and you can choose which one you want to map your AirPods back to. You can also access this same information in the Apple Health section. So if you go into Health and you go to Browse, there is a hearing section here, which will show your hearing test results. And of course, if you tap in, you'll be able to see your audiogram and you should be able to see all of your hearing tests as a list here as well. So it's a couple different options. You can even export it as a PDF if you'd like. Now let's imagine for a minute that you have already seen an audiologist and you have a hearing test on file. If you wanna upload those results, you can do that by simply clicking into hearing assistance, update results, scroll all the way to the bottom, click add hearing test, and you can click scan with camera. This is what I would recommend. You simply say, begin scan, you hold, your test and your phone, it will scan those results. You can say save, then it'll turn those results into its own version of an audiogram. Now I had to be sure as I was doing this that I was still and it was getting a good read. I did get a couple inaccurate reads, but after doing it a couple of times, I was able to get it to match up to what I actually saw on my individual hearing test. The last important note, if you're on the go at any point and you want to update your volume or your hearing aid settings, simply tap the ear icon from the control center. That will open up the whole control center, which will allow you to change amplification, balance, tone, ambient reduction, and conversation boost, which you simply tap to turn on. You can also decide right here if you want the hearing test results to apply to media or phone. All right, so now that you have your AirPods Pro 2 effectively turned into a pair of over-the-counter hearing aids, let me talk to you about my overall experience using these devices as hearing aids in a number of different settings. So the first obvious thing that I noticed when wearing AirPods as hearing aids is the form factor. Obviously it's much larger, it's visible to everyone, and it fully occludes the ear. Now, Apple does a good job handling occlusion inside of your ear, so it doesn't sound incredibly boomy when you're in transparency mode, but your ear is still totally full. Also, other people around you, my wife, my daughter, my friends, they can all see that I'm wearing AirPods when I am using these devices as hearing aids. It requires a little bit of explanation. Now, if you compare that to a traditional hearing aid, there are really two sizes that have been available on the market. This is the Sony hearing aid, which is an invisible style device Device sits deep inside of the ear canal. This one is going to typically feel pretty much invisible in most ears. You're not really going to see much of it. And when I'm talking to folks or interacting with them, they really are not going to think that I'm wearing a pair of AirPods. Now, on the other hand, this is the Sennheiser device, which is a behind the ear device. It's a little bit more lightweight in the ear. The piece sits behind the ear and a speaker comes inside of the ear canal. And that's what actually plays sound. Now, in general, I enjoy a receiver and canal hearing aid for its all day comfort. That means if I'm going to wear a hearing aid for eight to 10 to 12 hours, which I usually do, a receiver and canal hearing aid is the most comfortable option available. Similarly, a really small hearing aid like Sony is also more comfortable for all day wear. What I found is that my ears became a little bit uncomfortable with AirPods Pro 2 after about two or three hours. Now, if you're watching this video, you've probably worn earbuds before, so this isn't going to be hard to imagine. You probably wear earbuds for a few hours and you want to take them out and take a break. What that means is these are going to be situational devices. They're probably not devices you put in in the morning and take out at the end of the day. Now to that point, 
AirPods Pro 2 will give you about five or six hours of battery life on a full charge. The good thing is the charger recharges your devices very quickly, so you can drop them in for 15 or 20 minutes and get another couple of hours. But in general, you're gonna to have to take them out of your ears, put them back in your case, and then come back and get them when they're a bit more charged. At the end of this video, I'm going to record some sound samples through my AirPods Pro 2 that have been customized to my hearing loss. But let me tell you a little bit about my own experience with sound quality. In general, I found that Apple's AirPods did a really nice job of creating a round, smooth sound, but didn't give me as many highs as I typically would expect from a hearing aid. And that meant I had a little bit less clarity. I found the sound quality was just a little bit muddy when I was spending time with my wife or my daughter. My daughter's three and a half, and as toddlers often do, she turns her back and continues to talk to me a lot. This is always a great test for my hearing technology. My AirPods Pro 2 were not really able to handle this in the base program. I had to go into the settings and turn treble all the way up, the brightness in the app all the way up in order to really grab the sound of her voice. Typical hearing aids are able to do that a little bit more effectively. What AirPods Pro 2 did incredibly well was manage ambient sounds. So some folks are really annoyed by hearing the sound of air conditioning or maybe the rustling of leaves or things passing by them. And AirPods has the ability to turn that ambient sound almost completely off. And because these are larger devices, they have an incredible amount of processing power, they effectively shut all of that down, which means you're really only hearing voices. Now, what I did notice when I cleaned up all of the ambient sound and I had just pure silence and voices is I had a little bit of distortion in the voices and a little bit more muddiness even than when I was listening in a more balanced setting. I did find the conversation boost was helpful when someone was seated directly in front of me or I was looking directly at them as it narrows the microphones in towards what I'm looking at. In general, I have not been using my AirPods Pro 2 with conversation boost on. I typically toggle it off so I have a little bit more awareness around me. All right, so you very likely have the question, are AirPods Pro 2 as good as prescription or even the other leading over-the-counter devices on the market? The simple answer is it really depends on what you're looking for. AirPods Pro 2 obviously do a lot other than just amplification. They're fantastic headphones. They communicate seamlessly with the Apple ecosystem. They have now a great onboard hearing test. But when it comes to actually grabbing the right sounds, amplifying speech, turning down background noise, and doing that in a natural way that helps you interact with your environment, quite clear the AirPods Pro 2 are not quite up to the standard of what you would find with a Sennheiser All Day Clear, Sony devices, or devices that you might get in a clinic. And this really shouldn't be a big surprise. Although Apple is massive and has incredible track record in design and technology, they're stepping into somewhat of a niche space where the industry players, like the makers of the hearing aids you might get at a local clinic or the leading over-the-counter devices, have been working on hearing technology for 100 years, and they've figured out lots of little tricks to help folks manage the most complex background noise settings. That said, if you look at the less advanced over-the-counter hearing aids that are available for just a couple of hundred dollars, there is no question that Apple's AirPods are exceptionally better when it comes to sound quality. Now, you'll still have to consider form factor, comfort in the ears, and battery life, but Apple blows these entry-level hearing aids out of the water. The way I would look at it is that if you only have a couple hundred dollars to spend and you're looking for something you wear situationally, Apple AirPods Pro 2 could be an exceptional choice. If, on the other hand, you're looking for something you can wear for longer stretches of time, or you can move your budget up just a little bit to eight or $900, you're probably going to want to look at a product like Sony CREC 20, Sennheiser All Day Clear, or go up to a prescription level product that you would get at a local clinic. All right, that's enough of my experience. Let's get to the sound samples. I'll give you a sense for what these actually sound like inside of the ear. All right, you're hearing audio live through the AirPods Pro 2 with the Apple OTC hearing aid feature turned on. I have the control center open, so I'm going to give you a sense for how some of these features work. First of all, we'll just turn up the volume so you get a sense for what the volume controls can do. I want to change the tone from the center to the bright side, so you should hear a lot more crispness in my voice. Now we'll turn it to the bass side. It's a lot more smooth and round. Move it to the back to the center. Now I'm going to change the ambient reduction. We'll turn ambient reduction completely off. So you're now hearing everything around you. And now I'm going to turn it all the way up to the top. So you should be hearing very little ambient sound. It should help some of that background. Finally, I'll turn on conversation boost. And that will be the end of our demo. Okay, now for comparison, we have put a pair of traditional hearing aids into our test mannequin in the same background noise setting. So again, this is a light cafe sound. It's what you might expect if you were having coffee with a friend. You might hear some slight differences in sound quality. These are both programmed to my audiogram, so they should have the same 
general characteristics, but they may be handling background noise and clarified speech in a slightly different manner. I'd love to hear what you think about those sound samples and any questions that you have in the comments below. I'm incredibly excited to see how fast the hearing health category is evolving. Just two years ago, there were no consumer brands. Today, we have Sony, Sennheiser, Bose, Jabra, and now Apple. Can't wait to see where all of this goes next. Good luck with your research.